Hello, 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 hello. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another live session. Welcome to another live session. Welcome, 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 wherever you're watching from. Uh, today, we're going to talk about um, South Africans need to face some ad truths, you know. Um, you're welcome, 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 everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. You know, I, I honestly wanted to stop talking about this South African um, Nigerian issue, but I feel like it's something, you know, that is not going to go away anytime soon. And it's something we just need to keep on talking about because um, it doesn't seem that, you know, we're getting anywhere at the moment, you know. So I think it's something that we definitely need to keep on talking about because um, I, I've honestly, you know, said to myself that I'm not going to be talking about this um, South African Nigerian issue. But, you know, I, I believe that a lot of South Africans are just, you know, really ignorant and they're really delusional. And, you know, they just need to face some hard truths about the whole issue. And they need to understand how, um, you know, international laws work, how, you know, um, democratic, you know, um, communities, um, governments work, how, you know, diplomatic, um, you know, laws work as well. You know, a lot of them just seem to be, you know, um, uh, delusional and ignorant. Because I've, you know, I've tried to try to educate, you know, some you know people that I've engaged with, both South Africans and Nigerians, regarding this issue. Um, somebody says, "Why are people so obsessed with South Africa?" Nobody is obsessed with South Africa. The reason why I'm actually doing this live on my platform is because, um, you know, I've actually, I honestly said I was going to stop talking about this South African and Nigerian issue. But the reason why I feel like we need to address this is because I'm um, on the South African side. There's still, you know, a lot of energy put into this topic. Nobody is, nobody is um, obsessed with South Africa. I think even Nigerians in Nigeria don't even understand what's going on, to be honest. They have a lot of um, bigger fish to fry and bigger, you know, problems in Nigeria. Most Nigerians in Nigeria don't even aware that there's a problem with Nigerians in South Africa. And that's just the honest truth. You know, the reason why, you know, I felt I have to do this is because, um, you know, on... So I've actually just got blocked from a South African platform just because I was trying to like, you know, be objective and, you know, make them reason in a logical way. A lot of people still, you know, um, argue based on emotions and based on, um, you know, sentiments. But this has to go further than sentiments. It has to go further than sentiments. A lot of South Africans need to hear the honest truth. You know, when you listen to some, don't don't get me wrong. I've spoken to quite a lot of um intellectual South Africans, and we've all been able to agree that certain you know um you know certain actions need to be taken, and certain policies need to be in place, and you know things of that nature. But then there seems to be a you know actually a growing number of South Africans who just don't like to see reason. They just want to you know, argue based on emotions and, you know, their sentiments, their anti-Nigerian um, anti sentiments. And we, we need to be realistic. You know, Nigeria, Nigeria is not the end all of all South African problems. There's, South Af there's a lot of issues, you know, in South Africa. And I think the problem with Nigerians and, you know, the growing anti-Nigerian sentiment is just a way of disguising the wider issues and the wiser, you know, wider problems in the South African society. I've done my, you know, I've taken my time to do some research. I've done some research and I've also engaged, you know, with South Africans, both those who are, you know, against, you know, who share the anti-Nigerian sentiments, those who don't, and also Nigerian, you know, they are residents in South Africa. And I've been able to come up with, you know, my own um, views as to what I think is actually happening in South Africa. So anyways, guys, if you're just new, you can like, you can share, because I'd like to have a lot of people, you know, on here as well on this platform. I've actually, you know, I've, I'm tired of discussing this South African issue, but this morning I was just blocked on one of the South African platforms just because I asked some simple questions. If anybody is uh, familiar with my platform, I'm, you know, I'm of a very, very objective stance. The, even, even though I'm Nigerian, I don't argue for or, you know, against Nigerian. I argue based on facts, logic, and, you know, reasoning. 
it's not about you know because i'm nigerian i have to like you know share anti-south african sentiments or you know that that's not the way i operate and my platform is definitely not for that purpose my platform is you know to bring awareness to share positivity to Somebody said objective stance. Yes, you know, I, I am very objective. I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with my platform. You know, there's a lot of um, South Africans on my platform. I have South African moderators. So, you know, if you doubt my objectivity, it's probably because you're not familiar with this platform. And, you know, I can't, I can't blame you for that. Somebody says you do realize there are other countries in Africa who are complaining about Nigerians. Yes, you are, you are quite right. Yeah, but, the, but when you say complaining about Nigerians, what you, you know you, you you say complaining about Nigerians as if you know is a major major issue. They might be complaining about some Nigerians that are you know committing uh, crime or perpetrating um, criminal activities. But when you say complaining about Nigerians, that statement is a bit loose and it can be misinterpreted. You know, interpreted. You know. Nigerian boyfriend also says, "Why are people so obsessed with Nigeria?" You are very very correct. You are very very correct. I'm, I'm personally tired of this topic, you know, I'm tired of this topic discussing, but then I, I listened to some, I was on some South African platforms yesterday, you know, and, you know, I was triggered by the few, you know, actually not a few, many of the statements, many of the utterances about Nigerians. There was one particular South African, you know, that talked about, um, you know, like shedding uh, BLOOD. If it meant shedding BLOOD, you know, just to get rid of Nigerians, it's like it's almost become a kind of like, um, you know, um, hatred. And this this inhumane um, hatred for Nigerians is what I don't understand because um, South Africa has a lot of issues and Nigerians are the least of your issues right now, to be honest. That South Africa has a lot of problems with um, unemployment. There seem to be high unemployment. This has to do with, um, you know, the, your government's policies, your... All, all your um, political policies, they need to be in order. They need to put the South African people first. But it seems a lot of your policies in your country, they don't put your citizens first. And that's why you're having these issues. But then, instead of you addressing the issues, um, you know, face uh, face on, you know, ad ad addressing your issues directly, you seem to just, um, you know, disguise, you know, and use the Nigerian powder pushers as, as a disguise of your, you know, underlying fundamental issues, which I think is wrong. I, I do believe, yes, you know, um, Nigerians, the, some Nigerians are there, you know, perpetuating illegal activity. But it seems almost every single problem that South Africa is facing is, is somehow attributed to Nigerians, which is what, you know, I don't, it doesn't sit comfortably with me at all. Guys, if you just knew, you can share, you know, you can, you know, you know, you know, you can um, tap as well, you know. Some um, Filani says this narrative of hiding behind unemployment in um, SA, as if in Nigeria there is unemployment, is crap. Yeah, yes, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're entitled to your opinion, you know, but it's, it's, it, there, there are fundamental issues, you know, in South Africa which I think they need to be addressed. Your problems, I think, obviously, there is there a problem with um, Nigerians committing um, crime? And pushing powder, like you people call it. Yes, there is a problem, but I, I think there are on the you know on the line issues. There are deeper rooted issues. There are issues regarding your employment opportunities and also like opportunities that you have. I, I think there are already dwindling resources that you guys are actually you know fighting over. And then you know it's proper. It's it's actually you know more made more difficult. The situation is made more difficult when there are also foreigners coming into your country and fighting for the limited resources. That's why. Why you guys are having problems yes the nigerian um powder pushers that's a that's a, that's an issue that's just one you know just a little segment of your of your issue you have deeper underlying issues that you actually need to address and you don't need to shy away from you know so i was speaking i was listening to a south african guy yesterday and you know he was saying something about these nigerians when they come over they are so arrogant they drive flashy cars they you know they they take our jobs you know i was like okay i said you know i asked him i said you know i tried to engage him i said okay you said they take your jobs what um what job did you do you know what profession are you in i asked him and he actually told me and i also asked him you know about his qualifications and he mentioned his qualifications then i asked him a a simple question i said for example if you have um a, a degree in in a discipline you know like any profession if you have a degree and you're south african 
And then I am, you know, I'm Nigerian and I come to South Africa and I have a PhD in the same discipline. And we both go for an interview, you know. Who do you think is, is, is going to have, you know, like a better prospect of getting the job? And he said, oh, it should be him. And I said, oh, it should be you. I said, why should it be you? He said, oh, because he's South African. I said, yes, you do have a point. But then it, it, we have to check, you know, what, on what basis are the people actually employing? Are they employing based on, um, you know, you being South African or you being actually the best qualified person for the job? Because these are things that we need to know. If, if, um, if you want South Africa to put your people first, then South African policies, South African policies regarding um, employment, regarding um, housing, regarding all, you know, issues that has to do with, um, basic um, social amenities need to put the South African people first. They need to put the South African people first because, um, for example, our head in South Africa, you know, you actually recruit foreign nurses, you know, to come and work in South African hospitals. Why is that happening? Why are South African governments recruiting foreign nationals when I'm sure there are more than enough capable um, South African nurses in South Africa, you know? Because I don't understand all these um, anti anti-Nigerian um, sentiments. The anti-Nigerian sentiments is just what I don't understand. I mean, I don't, yeah, you, obviously you're entitled to your opinions and if Nigerians are coming to your country perpetuating illegal activities, yes, you are right to actually, but then when I just listen to some people with their illogical and delusional statements, like the, somebody said, oh, I don't care if they're good Nigerians or bad Nigerians, we just want all Nigerians out. You know, that doesn't make any sense because we also have South African nationals in different countries, in Nigeria, in the UK, in the US. What if the UK government just woke up one day and, you know, said, oh, we don't want South Africa? You know, it's, it's impossible anyways. You know, governments don't actually act like that. Governments don't work like that. There has to be a reason before a government can ask, you know, a national to leave its country. And a lot of these people seem to, you know, they don't understand how, you know, um, laws work. Or, or, or what do you what you call um you know international you know diplomacy and uh, diplomatic laws they just feel like it's okay for you to wake up one day and tell people to leave the country people that have contributed to society i'm not talking about let's let's leave all the people that are doing illegal activities we're not talking about them i'm talking about people that are you know earning a legitimate living in south africa how are you just going to wake up one day and say oh because you don't like nigerians you want all nigerians out even the ones that have been contributing to your society paying taxes the ones that have meaningful employment does it does, you have to think we have to think about this law Logically, you know, you know, void of emotions. Does this make sense? Somebody that's been working, you know, the all, all their life in your country, you know, dedicating their resources, their efforts, their skills, their expertise to making your society better, contributing positively, and then you feel it's okay for you to just wake up one day and tell them to leave, and then you think it's, you know, they're actually going to leave. Come on, we we need to stop being, you know, we need, we need to stop being um, ignorant. Because um, I have, I've actually, I've, I've had enough of this topic. This topic is actually starting to, you know, make my blood boil. Because um, I was on a South African platform this morning, and I was, I've actually been blocked. I've been blocked on so many South African platforms, but that's, you know, that it doesn't make any difference to me. But what I'm angry, you know, what I'm angry about is because a lot of, you know, most, uh, a lot of ordinary South Africans just seem to be delusional and ignorant. They don't understand diplomacy. They don't understand laws. They don't understand how things work work and stop you know coming under this guise of nigerian um nigerian powder dealers because the problem goes deeper than just nigerian powder dealers that's not the the main problem of south africa there are very very many problems anyways let me go to the comments because i think there must, there's been a lot of comments somebody said um somebody said so you are trivializing trivializing the powder issue you see, this is what this is what I keep on saying. You know, you, you keep saying I trivialize the powder issue, and I'm sure if you you know if familiar with my platform or you've heard me speak on a lot of South African platforms, I always share the same sentiments with most South Africans that you know the powder issue is um you know is a phenomenon that needs to be dealt with. It's actually becoming endemic in you know South African society. The powder issue is something that needs. It's not a, a small issue. It's a big issue because powder you know, affects, you know, all aspects of um, society. It's not just even the people that are selling it or even people that are, you know, taking, using the powder. 
Powder influences a lot of other criminal um, activities, a lot of crime. It involves in a lot of crime. It involves, you know, on unli unaliving people, um, kidnapping, extortion. So powder issue is not something that should be should be sniffed at. It's not something that should be taken lightly. But having said that, we need to understand, you know, the underlying causes. And also, you know, a lot of um, South Africans all also share this um, sentiment that if anybody is um, doing powder, then it's automatically a Nigerian. In, I, was, I was speaking to someone the other day as well. You know, they said, you know, they they live in a in a township or whatever. You know, and you know, they, they are, they're Nigerians um, selling powders. I said, okay, fine. They're Nigerians selling powder. How do you know that? I asked I asked them a straight question. How do you know it was a Nigerian selling the powder? Did you actually you know um, communicate with him? Did you engage him? He said, no, but I, I'm sure it was Nigerian. You know, this kind of comments. This kind of comments, this kind of, um, you know, like um, careless comments is what is going to make Nigerians not listen to the South African people's cries and the South African people's cause. Because people are just going to, you know, just dismiss, you know, because they, they feel like they've just been unfairly targeted. Uh, let me go to the um, comments section. Um, um team Adam said, as a South African woman married to a Nigerian, xenophobia is a no. Okay, you are... You're you're right. Yes, you know xenophobia. You know is definitely not right. Um, I'm not even talking about. Um, I'm not even talking about uh, South Africa being xenophobic. But I'm saying that if you're going to be, um, you know, for you to address your issues, you need to look at it, you know, holistically. You can't just have a myopic view towards your your issues. You can't just think, oh, all your issues revolves around Nigerian powder, you know, dealers. They're, they're underlying issues. And if South Africans are to be honest with themselves, you know, there are issues. There are issues with your, um, you know, your government policies. You know, your 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 lawmakers. They're not doing the right thing. You know, the, the corruption. And the greed is not making them, you know, do things that favor you as South Africans. And those are the people that you need to address, not the Nigerians as a whole. If there are problems with, with crime, if you have problems with crime, the government are the only ones that can actually, you know, fight the crime. You know, they can issue laws and they can have the, you know, they, they can, you know, give the right powers to the right departments, you know, the right policies in place. If you have a problem with um, immigration, if there's too much immigration, the, the government again needs to look at that. But then it's not just about you coming up, you know, every day on TikTok, say, oh, we want Nigeria to live, we want Nigeria to live. It's not, it's, you have to be, you have to understand, you know, how the you know, diplomatic laws work, how diplomatic relationships work. Do you think the South African government are going to risk relationship, you know, like diplomatic relationship with Nigeria just because a lot of you are not happy with um, Nigerian powder pushers? The, the powder pushers need to be dealt with. Yes, we know that. But asking all innocent Nigerians to leave your country, you know, when they're actually contributing, is not something that's going to sit well because you have to understand the role that foreigners play in the South African economy. That's why, you know, I'm just tired of, you know, having dialogue and debate with a lot of um, ignorant, delusional people, both on the South African and the Nigerian side. You need to understand how things work in real life. You have to understand the bilateral trade between South Africa and Nigeria. The amount of, you know, of, of, of money involved is in, in the billions between both countries. It's the countries that need to sit together and discuss the issues that the, um, the, the citizens are having. It's not about you coming on, um, on social media and spreading hate, you know, spreading propaganda. You know, spreading all kinds of, um, you know, like uh, deluded um, assertions about, about Nigerians. Yes, if, if it's about the um, Nigerian powder pushers, yes, it's fine. But then coming on social media and saying, oh, I don't like Nigerians because they're, 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 they're proud, because they're, they think they, they, they're educated. No, we're not going to accept that. You know, and I've championed the cause for, for the South African cause. If you're familiar with my platform, I've always used my platform to spread awareness that yes, we we need to hold um our brothers, our Nigerian brothers committing crime. We need to hold them accountable. But then, you know, but 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 then we, we need we need to be we need to be factual and we need to be um we need to be accurate with our with our information. We need to be factual, we need to be accurate, and we need to be sensible the way we present information. It's not about, you know, this is not about me being Nigerian. This is just me about, you know, trying to be objective and trying to be realistic. If anybody wants to come in the, um, come up and have a word, you know, in the panel, I'm going to open the panel in a minute. But, um, you know, I just wanted to go through some comments. Um, 
someone said we are not worried about Nigeria. You're not worried about Nigeria, but then you have um, countless 24-hour, you know, live streams just talking about Nigeria, and everything just seems to, you know, revolve around Nigeria. Every single issue that anybody, you know, addresses regarding um, relating to South Africa always comes back to Nigeria. So we need to stop being, you know, like, um, you know, delusional and ignorant and thinking. Even if every single Nigeria left South Africa right today. Let's, let's say oh, every single Nigeria leaves South Africa. Is South Africa going to stop having the issues that it's having? I want you South Africans to think about that. Is, are you honestly going to stop having all your problems that you're having if every single Nigeria left your country? So, someone said, um, do you live in SA? Of course I don't live in SA. I, I don't live in SA. But I'm not, you don't, under, don't, I don't have to live in SA for me to understand what's going on in SA. The same way you don't live to, you don't have to live in Nigeria for, for you to understand the problems and the issues that we have in Nigeria. We, we have so many problems in Nigeria, just like SA. And, you know, we, we, we're finding ways of moving forward. And also with the, uh, with the South Africans complaining about Nigerians, I'm sure there are Nigerian representatives in South Africa. I'm sure there could be a forum held. Instead of you coming on social media and, you know, um, perpetu um, you know like using propaganda and spreading hate, you can actually, you know, discuss with your leaders in South Africa. They can actually have meetings with the Nigerian representatives in South Africa and outline you know, are, are all the issues that you guys are having with Nigerians. When I say Nigerians, I mean Nigerians committing crime. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't suggest you, you know, advocating to remove Nigerians that are there legitimately and in an honest living. I'm talking about the Nigerians that are the criminal elements. You can have, you know, dialogue with the Nigerian representatives in um, South Africa. We have the, um, diplomats. We have representatives of Nigeria in South Africa. You need to call them to a meeting, you know, address all these issues, bring them out and think about, uh, you know, like, Think about positive ways of moving forward. It's not you coming on social media every day and ranting about Nigeria did this, Nigeria stole my pot of soup, Nigeria took my wig, Nigerians are the reason why I have a big yash. That, oh, come on, it's getting really, really, um, it's getting really boring now. The narrative is getting boring. I understand the plight of powder. I understand that I don't trivialize it and I don't take it, I don't take it for granted. It's, it's, but when every single issue that relates to South Africa is being attributed to Nigeria, you can understand our frustration frustrations as Nigerians and when we come and say no enough is enough Phil Phil Philani says um king you are offending us you call us delusional yes I'm, I'm not saying all South Africans are delusional but I'm I'm saying South Africans that think it's okay to, for you to ask Nigerians that are honest Nigerians that are having a good living to leave the country. That's what I call delusional. Yes, you can ask Nigerians committing crime to leave your country, deport them, jail them, you know, you, on a life them. It's up to you, whatever, how you want to, you know, deal with them. But Nigerians that are there legally, legally, you know, having good, um, honest living and have worked tirelessly, you know, worked very hard for decades to build something in Nigeria, to, sorry, to build something in South Africa. For you to think it's okay for you to just ask them to leave and threaten them with violence if they don't, that is definitely being delusional. Because I was on a live yesterday, I think it was um, IT specialist to be to be exact. And, you know, this, this guy said, oh, we are ready to shed our BLOOD. You know, to get rid of the Nigerians. And if they don't leave, we're going to like, um, we're going to use weapons. We go, I'm like, come on. 21st century and then you're talking like this on a public forum, on a public space, and then you think it's going to sit well with Nigerians. I've always been, you know, I've always tried to adopt a very, very neutral stance regarding this issue. I've always been as objective as possible. I've given a lot of South African people um, the, the audience, you know, and the platform to be able to air their views and their concerns, something which has never happened, you know, to me on the South African platform. You know, most on South African platforms have blocked me just because I always tell them the truth. And until we, we tell each other the hard truth, then we, can, we can't move forward on this issue. Exactly. Um, Kat Singh said, Nigerians are not your real enemies, but that is a conversation for another day. Exactly what I keep saying, you know, like, you know, we, we can't, we can't um, pretend to deal with problems facing us if we are not going to, like, deal with the underlying causes of those problems or the wider issues. If, you, if you, For example, it's like you having 10 problems. And then you just follow, you, you just um, concentrate on just one of those 10 problems. And then thinking by solving one of those problems is going to um, solve every single 10 problems that you have. No, you have to bring each um, problem out, you know, individually and you address them.
this countryman says, come show us a single honest ear in essay. We don't know one. You see, this is what I keep saying again. You know, like when you keep saying there's not, not, there's not a single honest Nigerian, then you've already lost the, the battle. You've already lost the battle of trying to get the Nigerians to actually be on your side and to listen to, to, your, to your issues. Because when you've made that kind of statement, then you, you've already you know, created a barrier. You've created a wall between you and Nigerians because how can you just make a statement and saying it, there's no honest there's no single honest Nigerian in uh, South Africa that's just ridiculous uh, Mass Inga says the underlying problem is what the other Nigerians have done across the globe and not guys I'll, 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 be, I'll be back oh, I, need, I need to go briefly um Philan Philan said, all I see is that yesterday they offended you, King, and now you're offending us. You see, you see, that's that's another reason that we keep on having problems as Nigerians and South Africans. We need to understand and not misinterpret, um, you know, what our submissions. I didn't, so I said, you know, I said, you, you, you made a statement saying, you know, I called South Africans delusional, but I didn't call South Africans delusional. I'm saying the ignorant South Africans that think is okay for you to remove um, honest, um, hardworking Nigerians from your country who haven't done any crime. I've called them delusional, not the, the whole South African, um, you know, people. Yes, as as I was saying, um, as as I was saying, we just need to be um, honest with ourselves and and you know look at ourselves. You know, I mean, for example, now why is South Africa? For example, I, I mean, why is South Africa recruiting, you know, foreign? Why is South Africa recruiting foreign uh, nurses if if they are, they are you know, um, qualified nurses in South Africa that can do the um, jobs? Why are your government recruiting foreign nurses? For example, you know, these are these are problems with your policies, and your policies need to favor South Africans. You know, the, the South African people need to be put first. 
So if your if, you, if your government are you know um, introducing policies which is not favorable to you South Africans, then it's your government that you need to hold accountable, not the foreigners, not the people that are coming and taking those jobs because they are willing to accept the jobs you know for lower pays. For for you know so I don't I, you know I don't maybe I'm just not you know maybe I'm not getting something straight because this doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. If, if we're going to be honest, if, if we're going to deal with an issue and we're all going to be, you know, be able to be on the same page, we need to be honest with ourselves. We need to put emotions aside. We need to be factual. The same way, I, you know, I, I encourage our um, Nigerian brothers and sisters to always put emotions aside when they um, dialoguing with the South Africans. It's the same way I expect the South African people to also put emotions aside. And we need to be factual. And we need to tell ourselves the hard truth. We need to look ourselves in the, in the, in the eyes and tell ourselves the truth. Not sweeping things under the carpet and you know coming under the disguise of you know certain issues and not looking at the, at, at, at the issues holistically. The other, we, otherwise, we're just going to be here round and round in circles, wasting our time. This is not about Nigerians um, versus South Africans. This is just about you know us facing the issues that we are we are facing. You know dealing with them add on you know face on without you know sweeping everything anything under the carpet. Because you're asking Nigerians to be on your side and you know to share your you know um, your concerns, but then you know you you're actually not being um, realistic and you're also not being fair to, to to Nigerians as a whole and you you're not being honest and you know I'm not going to sit down wasting my time you know dealing with people that are not that are not honest. If 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 we both have a problems, if if I have a friend and we both have a problems, we need to sit down and iron our problems out. He is going to come out and you know tell me his grievances that he has you know with me, and I'm going to do the same. But then it's not somebody is going to say, oh no no no, you, you, everything is all your fault. No, it's not. It doesn't work that way. It's, it has to be all of us, you know, coming together and you know and telling telling ourselves the truth. Thank you.